Hey guys, welcome into my channel. Today we are doing my eyeshadow palette declutter. I don't think I've done an eyeshadow palette declutter on my channel quite of this magnitude before. I've done collection videos, I have done like smaller declutters, just maybe even personally, but I've never gone through my entire collection and decluttered as much as I have done now. I've already filmed the declutter. Just jumping in to film this intro afterward. It wasn't cutthroat, but it was the most palettes I had ever decluttered all in one, really since I have started collecting palettes, which I think started in like 2020. So here we are going on almost four years of me collecting and starting my channel in July of 2022. So since then then I've accumulated some palettes that I wanted to test for videos. I've also gotten a better idea of the kind of palettes that I like that work for me. So I'm trying to be really honest, irrespective of the brand, but really like which ones I will actually reach for. I've already done other declutters on my channels. I've done primers, concealers, setting sprays, powders. I've also done my blushes, bronzers, highlighters, face palettes. So if you guys are interested in that, please check out my channel. You can also see my declutter playlist and I will have upcoming decluttering of my singles and all of my eye products like liners and that's probably it. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're not already, I would love to see you subscribe so you can stick around. Now let's get into the declutter. All right, let's get into it, you guys. I have pulled out basically like the drugstore of drugstore palettes, not the more affordable ones that you can find at Ulta. These are like truly drugstore palettes or and or in the kind of drugstore price point. I don't know where I'm gonna go in this video necessarily. There are some palettes that I tried this year that I know that I wanna declutter, but a lot of my older collection, I'm not sure. So you guys are gonna help me like kind of figure that out as we go. And I may do some swatches. So I do have my little wet towelettes here because there may be some things that I just, I'm not sure if I wanna keep or not. So anyway, this is the first stack you guys, just so you can see. I am going to move it over here to the side and I will be showing you everything, even if I am gonna keep it. So it will be kind of like a collection style video. So the first two that I have are from Revlon. These are the Colorstay mini palettes. This is Enigma and Maverick. I feel like I've had other ones in my collection and I may have decluttered them, but I held onto these two. I just, I think they're cute. I think the quality in them is fairly decent. They're not super expensive. They are very, very small pan size, but they're really nice for travel. So these two I'm gonna hold on to. This one that I have from Makeup Revolution is the I Heart Revolution Nudes Chocolate. I had another one in my collection and I decluttered it, but do I like this? I feel like this was one of those that I just felt performed a lot better than any other kind of Makeup Revolution palette that I've tried before. So I've held on to this one. Yeah, I like this color story. I'm, I'm gonna hold on to this one and it smells good too. It has that like sweet, I don't know if it smells like chocolate, but sweet smell. So that one's gonna stay. I have two of the e.l.f. Bite Size palettes. I'm not a huge fan of e.l.f. shadows in general. I, I haven't had the greatest luck with them. I have this one, which is Orange Dreamsicle, and then this one is In Cream and Sugar. This Orange Dreamsicle is terrible. These two shades basically look the same. This shimmer looks the same as the mattes, this one right here. It's a really powdery formula. Actually, this one is like, I don't know, like a matte with sparkles. This one is really, really bad, so I'm going to declutter this one. But this one in Cream and Sugar, I've held onto. This shade doesn't really show up on me very much. Am I really gonna reach for this? You know, it's pretty limiting when only one shade really shows up. I just, I don't know. It might be nice to keep for reference, I guess, in case they come out with new launches or they reformulate or something. I don't know, you know, who, who knows what's going on here, but I'm gonna hold on to this one for now. I have one of these and I have talked about these on my channel before. This is the Oma by Sharon C, more affordable line. She came out with, in 2022, I think three or four different quads. These are amazing. These are her normal formula. She did not change what she does in her normal, like larger palettes. This is the Eye Service Eyeshadow Quad, Eyes Eyes Baby, and it's in the Color Story Dreaming. You guys, this is amazing. If you ever get a chance to pick one of these up to test this formula out, these are like $10 palettes and they're basically like expensive quality shadows. And the mattes too, they're amazing. They're rich and they're so good, you guys. So this one is definitely gonna stay. In fact, if she had other color stories that I felt like would look good on me, I would pick up other ones. I think some of the other ones that she has are like green and I don't know, probably not a palette I would get a ton of use out of, but these are amazing and this one is going to stay. 
I want to say these are my essence palettes. I'm pretty sure this is all the essence palettes that I have. I have the Blooming Wings. This launched, I want to say, in 2022 or the end, maybe the beginning of 2023. And it's a very neutral color, color story. They had a couple of other ones. I want to say the two other ones that launched in this Blooming Wings collection. This is really not good quality. Not something I'm going to get a ton of use out of. Some of the shimmers are really nice in here, but the mattes are not super pigmented. They're really desaturated. They look very similar on the eyes. I just think Essence does a better formula than this. In fact, their Pumpkins Pretty Please mattes are really, really good. The shimmers here are really nice. This was a limited edition collection, I want to say, that came out in September, October last year. Anyway, I think this is a really good formula from them, both in the shimmer and the matte. So I'm gonna hold on to this one, but this one I'm going to let go. There's no sense in keeping it. And then this year they launched, I think a couple of different color stories in this style palette. And this one was an all shimmer and welcome to Sin City. This is an extremely beautiful, creamy, foiled, metallic shimmer formula. So I'm holding on to this one, but this one in Cape Town, these mattes were awful. They were super patchy. The shimmers in here were really good, but because I have this all shimmer one, I don't need to hold on to these ones, I don't think. Like even though this teal is, ugh, it's so amazing. I think I have that in other palettes. Look at this gold. Now you start swatching things, Carrie. That's tricky. I don't know. I have a gold in here from Essence. Yeah, I already have this one here from Essence. So I don't need to hold on to this. I'm not going to reach into this for the mattes. And I just won't think to reach into it for the shimmers. This shade is awfully patchy. Same here. So I'm going to declutter this one. I have one here from JCat. I think this also did launch this year. This is the Chaotic Element. It's a 21 color story. It's really nice. Their formula in the shimmers is beautiful. The mattes are really good. If you're looking for a fun, bright color story, I think JCat does a really good job. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. I have one here from Relove. This is the Empower palette. I didn't love the color story on this. Plus these shades are super desaturated. There's only one real shimmer and it's not really my style. This just does not bring me joy in the midst of all the shadows I have. So I'm gonna declutter this. I have one here from Went Wild. It's one of their color icons in Walking on Eggshells. It again, pretty desaturated in terms of like the deepest shade here. The shimmers aren't bad, but the shade doesn't show up on me. Just no, it's, you know, I have so many palettes in my collection that I don't need to keep something like this. If I'm gonna reach for something over this like 10 out of 10 times, this will just get ignored, so declutter. I have two palettes here from NYX. One is the Way of the Water collection from Avatar. It's basically a pressed pigment palette. And I don't know if I'm blinding you guys, I'm sorry. I mean, it's a decent color story and it's really fun, but all of these are listed as like not safe for the eyes. It's not the best quality that I've seen from NYX either. So I, I'm just gonna declutter this one as well. And then finally, the NYX Ultimate Paradise Shock that I think came out this year. And I've had one of in these like styles before from NYX and I did not love the formula, but I think this one was better. I think the shimmers in here were just creamier. I do find that NYX sometimes in their shimmer formula, like they can be a little bit dry. It's like a really pretty duochrome. I just feel like this one was a step up in quality, so I'm gonna keep this one. And then I have two here from Milani, the Gilded Nude and the Luster Light. Both of these are gorgeous. I feel like this formula is very similar to Sigma. Like even the shimmer formula feels very similar. This is just kind of your mauve neutral tones. I love it. And these are your nudes with pops of mauve. But I feel like the formula on these is actually really good. I think Milani does a decent job with their eyeshadow formula. So I'm gonna hold on to these ones. And then I have two here from LA Girl. You know, LA Girl is kind of one of those that's like hit or miss for me. I'm not always sure I love their formula. I feel like this one just didn't knock my socks off. And I feel like some of these kind of hard panned, they were just a little bit on the drier side. Like they don't, see they're just not, like some of them are okay. And then some of them just aren't. Let me see this shimmer. I feel like the shimmer formula here was a lot better. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I love this palette and I never think to reach for it. Here I am swatching all the shimmers. 
I don't know if I'm gonna hold on to this or not. I genuinely do not think to reach for it, but it's really, okay, it survives. You know, you start swatching these and you start changing your mind. It's kind of how these declutters go. This one is more recent release from the Buphoria collection from LA Girl. This one is like Dazzle in a Daze or something. What do they call this? Gaze in a Maze. I actually thought that this was a pretty decent formula too. This one's a little bit of a duochrome topper, but all the shimmers were pretty nice. Only this shade here kind of hard panned on me. It's new when I like it, so I'm gonna hold on to that one. I have two from Perfusion, actually. One all glitter monochromatic palette. This is a terrible glitter formula. They just don't stick together. I, I'm not gonna hold on to that, so I'm gonna declutter this one, wrong pile. And then this one is the Winter Ballroom. This is so bad. These shades are just, they are so patchy and they diffuse out into nothing. There's a ton of pressed glitters in here. None of the matte formula is good. It's not bad in terms of color story, neutral, green, purplish, I don't know, blue and darker blue. These two are kind of like grayish blue. It's beautiful, like the layout and all that. It's just, it's terrible quality. So I'm gonna declutter this one. Oh, I missed this one from LA Girl. So I have one of their four pans. The four play is what they're called. Yeah, the four play eyeshadow palettes. These also came out this year. And I wanna say they came in three different color stories. Four, maybe? This one was the feel good. And I don't know, I don't know. This is kind of one of those formulas from LA Girl that's like, do I like it? They put like one glitter kind of topper in here. This one's nice. This shimmer out here isn't bad. It's just like, I wish this was a matte shade so I could build a different look. But yeah, see, this is just like a glitter kind of topper. I don't know, it's gonna stay. I go back and forth with LA Girl, like a lot in terms of their eyeshadow formula. So I'm never really sure what I'm gonna do. This one from Catrice is the Rainforest Haze palette. It only has three mattes, one, two, three. And this is super desaturated and patchy and kind of a weird tone too. Like I just don't like the way it looks on my eyes. The most redeeming quality is the shimmer formula and that is why I held onto this palette. But I just, I don't think I'm gonna hold onto it. Like I don't see myself reaching for these greens or do I want to? Look at this one right here. This looks like a duochrome. I didn't even notice that before. I don't know. I do not know, you guys. It is one of those things, look at that. The mattes suck. The mattes are terrible, but the shimmers are good. Oh, I'm gonna hold on to it. That honestly might be my best green shimmer palette. So that's kind of why I'm grappling with it. I have other palettes that have green shimmers. I just don't think I have ones that are like, like this good. Even the BH Cosmetics Avocado Toast, some of those shimmers aren't as rich in green as this one is. That's why I'm grappling with it. So I think I do want to hold on to it for the green shimmers. Then I have one from Believe Beauty. This really looks kind of like an all shimmer palette, but it is not. Some of these are satin mattes. I honestly think it is such a beautiful formula. It performs way better than you would think. I actually recommend that if you haven't tried their eyeshadow formula, I think it's fun and you should test it out. I wanna hold on to that one. And then this one I love, but is super neutral and boring. It's Pixie by Petra. It is in Rosette Ray. It's such your neutral burgundies. It's so pretty though, it's like every day. It's the right kind of like desaturated satins that look really, I don't know, they're just super flattering, I guess. They're just everyday wearable. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. So we decluttered eight from that stack. I don't know how many we kept, but we will do a tally at the very end of the video, you guys, so we can count how many we've kept versus how many we've decluttered. But from this stack, it is eight. Let me go grab the next one. All right, I went and grabbed the next stack. I just grabbed all of my BH Cosmetics stuff. I think last year I was trying to collect these after they announced that they were no longer gonna be in business. They were filing for bankruptcy. And basically we may never get our hands on the formula anymore. Now that they've been purchased by Makeup Revolution, I have tried some of their palettes and I'm just not as big of a fan. I think I may declutter some of these just like depending on the color story but I say we just let the wind take me where it's gonna take me and I'm gonna set these aside again I think we'll go over this collection first so this one was the say what collection I'm pretty sure that's what it's called this one was looking like a snack mmm pinky, I don't know, this collection, these shadows performed so well. I really just don't see myself getting rid of this. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna hold on to that one. And then do not disturb. Hmm, I don't grab for blues that often. Yeah, I might keep this whole collection. I just feel like the quality in this one was really, really good. So I'm gonna keep do not disturb. I think I'm gonna keep let that shit go, which was, 
Cassie some greens in here. BH Cosmetics would be my only other formula that I have in those like really nice green shimmers. I'm gonna hold on to this one. Optimistic AF, I think is, oh, I love this color story. My warm toned delight. And then low key, love you. Maybe my favorite, I don't know, probably, but I'm gonna keep all of those ones. Let's go through the Birthstone series next. I think I only have four. Garnet, I tried for the first time this year. I don't know, I'm not as big of a fan of the color story on this one. I just, do I need this? I just didn't love the way that the browns and the reds looked together. I'm gonna let this one go. I will never reach for that. And then diamond, I think I'm gonna hold on to this one. Like this is an amazing silver glitter. Like if I wanted to grab a silver glitter, this one is just awesome. And this black shimmer here, I have some black shimmers, I think in a MAC palette. I also have other ones. I just, I don't know, something about the shimmers and glitter and this one is nice. And Pearl June, I like this one also. And Citrine. Yeah, I also like this one. I love this really, really bright yellow shimmer. So I'm gonna hold on to that one, but I'm just gonna let this one go. I don't I don't need it for collection purposes. Am I gonna hold on to this one? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the band together. I'm gonna hold on to the garnet. Oh, can't make up my mind. But these little four pans, these are awful. These little quads are terrible. This release came out after Makeup Revolution purchased them. This was their very first release. So this was Iceland. The quality in this is so bad. It is so bad. Not only are these like just not their normal shimmer formula, the mattes were absolutely awful. They're just not as intense as BH can go. I would say the shimmers here are the best thing about them, but the mattes for me were really, really bad. I just don't wanna hold on to these. I'm not gonna use them. So Iceland's gonna go. Malibu barely even showed up on me. And that's like, I don't even know what, a dry, no. No Malibu. Mykonos, I feel like this one was the best performing one in terms of the shimmers, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I'm gonna let that one go. And Miami, ugh, also awful. I just remembered how powdery these were. I couldn't pick up any pigment on my brushes. And maybe it needs like a natural hair bristle brush and not a synthetic one. I don't know, but I'm not gonna reach for those. And then these ones were the Poison Shock Collection. And I had Nightshade, which I think was all purple, monochromatic. Do I wanna keep this one? And then Scorpion Sting. Both of these are like monochromatic palettes. Let me do a little bit of swatching, cause I don't know, are these still performing? Yeah, they do feel really nice and creamy. Will I reach for this? Like they do such a good job in light, mid and deep and then different color shimmers, even though these two look really similar, this one and this one. And same here, light, mid, deep. I don't know if you're really looking for a monochromatic palette. I feel like BH did, well, you can't look for it now, but I feel like BH Cosmetics did such a good job in these poison shock ones, even those say what ones. So I'm gonna hold on to these. I just, I can't part. So, so far I've only gotten rid of those little four. And then I have my travel series palettes. I wanna say it's just these four. So this one is Paris, Lost in Paris, something like that. I, I can't part with this one either. These shimmers are just amazing. I like this color story too. Lost in Los Angeles, Paris was passion in Paris. This one is a all pastel palette. It's probably one of my only all pastel palettes and some of these shimmers are just freaking amazing. Like this light teal, this, I don't, these are so good so I'm holding on to that. This one is Party in Puerto Rico and it's a warm toned, it's fun. I'm gonna keep that one. Hanging in Hawaii, you know, it's so boring. It's so boring and like, some of these mattes look so similar to the others. It's like, do you break up the band? I think is like my question at this point. Like, do I wanna like get rid of some and not others? I don't know, I like neutral palettes, so it's hard, but I have such a big collection. Will I reach for these? I don't know, there may come a day where I'm like rotating palettes out. You see how I'm grappling here? If you guys have ever decluttered eyeshadows, it's like, woo, when you start without a direction, you're liable to have to make a U-turn. Um, I'm gonna keep both of these. I just, I can't, I'm not gonna torture myself. It was my money. And then I have the Weekend Vibes collection. I wanna say, is this Momo? Yeah, three from the Weekend Vibes. I like all three of these mimosas and my neutral, slightly bright color story. Am I even on camera here? Um, and some of these shimmers, again, are so, so fun. And I feel like the quality was probably the best in any one of the collections besides Say What that came out of the Weekend Vibes. So I'm keeping that one. This one is brand new. 
Do I need this? No. The blueberry muffin. Oh, this one isn't brand new. It was the avocado toast. I'm so sorry. It's like the reflection is terrible. But some of the blue shimmers in here are fantastic. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. I'm also gonna get rid of this sleeve. This is the one that I tried for the very first time this year. And again, like the, here's some of the greens that I feel like I would reach into this palette if I wasn't gonna reach into Catrice, but I'm gonna hold on to all of those. Then I have some randos here, the opalescent palette. I'm not blown away by this color story and I don't feel like the quality here is as good as the other collection. So this one, I'm gonna keep in the sleeve cause I am going to declutter this. And the give back step up was probably like a limited edition, I wanna say like charity palette. And I have enjoyed this palette so much. Let me swatch some of these shimmers again, see if they're still creamy. I just loved some of these. They were just so fun. Holy smokes. I'm gonna hold on to this one. The final one I have, I also have really enjoyed. It's the BFF, oh my gosh, the reflection. Alondra and Elsie, I don't know who those folks are. I think this is a beautiful neutral palette. I, I haven't even dug into like the blues here. Oh, don't start swatching. It's such a nightmare when you start swatching things. I'm gonna hold on to this one. So out of this whole stack, I only decluttered five. I don't know, I still feel good about it though. So let me go get the next stack. I am like over here trying to get these like perfectly square in frame and I can't tell like what's in frame perfectly. <laughs> I don't know if the camera's crooked or my head is crooked. One of the two is true. So these are all my ColourPop palettes. I don't foresee myself getting rid of a ton, but again, we're gonna kind of like see. I never know what direction I'm going. Oh look, I already have eyeshadow on this. It never fails. My brand new clean blanket. I've done a pretty good job curating the purchases with ColourPop and not just going really crazy in terms of just picking up every release that they have. So this one is going coconuts. I picked this up because it was really popular, but it's not my favorite color story because it's maybe a little bit more cool tone than I normally reach for, but I am gonna hold on to this one because I like the kind of monochromatic neutrally shades and it's a really popular palette. And then Wine and Only, I've had really, really long, nice, deep, grungy color story. Not a whole lot of variety here, but I feel like I have a kind of attachment to this palette because I think it's one of the very first color pop palettes that I purchased when I was like building my collection. So I'm gonna hold on to this one as well. Then I have some of the cardboard packaging. I wanna say these ones are all kind of the same size. We'll put these ones over here. So I wanna say these are the nine pans. This is She's Got Solstice, yeah, nine pans. I, I love this one. Again, probably one of my earlier palettes, but I love all the shades in here. They're just something that I really enjoy and I think I've traveled with this one, so I wanna hold on to that. All things Equinox. Oh, clearly a shade is broken in here. A little bit cool to, I just, I'm holding on to it. Bling time, gonna hold on to this one as well. This is a fun little spring one. And then that's taupe. This is one I really bought because it was popular just so that I could test it out. I do not love cool tones on me. And I think a lot of these shades do not look good on my skin tone or my undertone maybe. I have a lot of people say that they love cool tones on them. I just, I for whatever reason, these ones look a little bit ashy. So I don't thoroughly love this palette, but because it's really popular, I feel like this one and Going Coconuts, I would hold on to, you know, just for reference, as long as those palettes were still available. Not that I've ever referenced them, but you know, I could, who knows? Who the heck knows? And then I wanna say these ones are the next size. This is by the Rose. This is a newer one in my collection. I love this. I love these tones. I'd love to get more use out of it. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. So Fly, I've also traveled with. I don't know if I need this, but I'm gonna hold on to it anyway. And then these two, I have Menage a Moi. I feel like I've traveled with this one. I really like these colors. I really like the burgundy vibe. That's just kind of my thing. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. Off Melrose, also really like. This is kind of a cooler tone color story that I kind of like. So that one I'll be holding on to. However, I got this one in the ColourPop Black Friday mystery box that I purchased and I already have the palette as you can see. So I'm gonna hold on to this one that's older because this has not been touched and it's still in the box so I can donate this. That makes me feel better than like swapping out an old formula. So I'm gonna donate slash declutter that one. One little four pan quad. I love this. I think I have traveled with this as well. 
I don't know. They just, some of these I feel like I have tried. I didn't love, but I've held on to this one. Uh, did I say it was sorbet? Sorbet. I'm going to hold on to that one. One that I'm absolutely going to get rid of is the Flirty Talk palette that launched for Valentine's Day. This is a monochromatic, not my kind of red color story. And I don't know if you guys can see, but this super shock in the corner here came totally bad. It's just gross. It was like soaking wet when it arrived. It's totally fallen apart. And I didn't love the way that these tones looked on me. I felt like they looked way, way too similar. So not a fan of this one. Going to declutter that. The Troublemaker I'm definitely on the fence about. I have some cool tones from ColourPop. And I just don't know if I need this. I don't see myself reaching for this at all. It's honestly just not my... Look how light those are. Whoa, I don't usually do swatches like that. I mean, I like this silver, but I know even that one doesn't, I'm gonna just declutter it. It's just not my favorite looking on my eyes. That was like one palette I swatched that made me think the opposite. And I have It's a Mood. I haven't even touched this one yet. This one came also in the Black Friday sale. It has, I wanna say one press glitter, which is fine. It's a big palette. I don't know if I'm gonna love this quality yet. So I'm gonna keep it to test it. And then getting fresh, I don't think I can get rid of this like ever. It's it's one of those palettes that if you guys have watched any of my other declutter videos, I had a moment decluttering a bronzer or like showing a bronzer because it was a bronzer that I had traveled with um, back when I went home when my dad got sick. And this is the palette that I took. I just thought it had a ton of variety of shimmers and a ton of variety of mattes. And so it now has one of those places in my heart and it just cannot leave. So out of that whole stack, I ended up decluttering three. That's not terrible. As long as I can declutter some from every stack, maybe I'll feel good about it. Let me grab the next one. This is my Juvia's Place collection. And then these are some more affordable palettes. So let's move this over again. Let's work on this more affordable set. So I actually have four and all of the launches from Flower Beauty that she's got in the shimmer formula. So desert lights, jungle lights, garden lights, and coastal lights. The only one that has a different formulation that is a finer and light shimmer formula is the one in coastal lights. But I don't wanna get rid of any of these. This shimmer formula, if you guys have never seen, here, I'll just do one swatch. That's what they look like. They're intense, they are creamy, they are some of the best shimmers I wanna say that you can get kind of at the drugstore. I mean, they're intense, they're crazy. You know what, let me swatch this other one for you because this one has a ton more light reflection. It's amazing. So I'm holding on to all four of these. I don't foresee myself ever getting rid of those unless they go bad. One here from W7, this is the Romanced palette that is duping the Soft Glam from ABH. I like a lot of W7 products. I wouldn't say that they've all become my favorite in my collection. I have decluttered quite a bit of them because I wanna make room, I think, for more expensive things. But their eyeshadow formula is not my favorite. The mattes are a little bit dry. The undertone is not the greatest in terms of like how it's duping ABH. The shimmer formula is decent, but it's not fantastic. So I am going to declutter that one. I have two here from Moira, from the Moira Land series, I wanna say. I don't love this box style packaging. I think it's cute. It's just kinda not my thing. This is the one, that I tried for the first time this year. I'm sorry, this is the Love Letter series. I called it the Moira Land series. That's this one. I really do like the mattes and shimmer formula. I mean, they're really, really good quality. This is a little bit of a funky color story. You've got your blues and you have your kind of neutrals, but I'm still gonna hold on to this one. I love so much of Moira Beauty's products that I talk about them so much on my channel, so I wanna hold on to it. Yeah, this one was the Love Letter series. Super cute. A much more up my alley kind of color story. Again, I feel like they do a good job. I wanna say maybe some of these shimmers have got, no, they're still really good and creamy. So I do hold on to this little insert here because it has some cute stuff on it. I think it's like part of the aesthetic. I'm gonna hold on to it. Not sure about my Juvia's Place ones. I don't have a huge Juvia's Place collection. I feel like I like a lot of these. The Blush Rose, one of my favorites because of this shade right here, it's delectable. I absolutely love this palette, so I'm gonna hold on to this one. The mauves, I absolutely love. This is a topper, but it's such a beautiful shade. I love these burgundies, I can't let it go. These ones I might think about letting go. It's the Nubian by Juvia's Place. Such good neutral shimmers though. 
Okay, she stays. Nubian and Cor Nubian three coral. Reading it upside down. So funky. Isn't this funky? Will I reach for this? Will I? Will I reach for it? There's some shimmers in here I haven't even touched. The Saharan by Juvia's. This is where I start looking at these and going, <laughs> like, are you ever going to reach for it? But then will you be sad about it? My Juvia's place collection isn't even that big, so I'm going to hold on to those. The candy shop. Here's one. Do I want to keep this one? Do I love this? Is this blue amazing? I feel like some of these are on the drier side. I don't know if I absolutely love this one. Honestly, I don't even see myself reaching for this like ever again. That one's really pretty, but I love the other ones from Juvia's Place more than this one. This one did come out in 2023. Yeah, I just haven't had it long enough to feel like I'm ready to let it go. Oh, the wind, how it knocks me back. This is the Culture 2 palette. It's the final one that I have. I actually really enjoy this color story. I actually really enjoy the formula on most of these mattes and shimmers. The one that I find difficult and kind of patchy and diffuses out a little bit extra is this one in Dashiki. It's a really beautiful shade too, so it's kind of a bummer. Otherwise, I feel like this performs really well. And some of these like duochromes here are just intense and great. So I'm holding on to that one. So I only declared one out of this entire stack, but I told you guys, if I do one, I feel good about it. This stack here is ABH, Nabla, and Ofra. So let's move these aside. I don't foresee myself getting rid of any of the ABH ones because I do reach for those actually. And the Nabla ones, we'll just have to kind of see. I have four of the Cutie palettes. Some of these I don't think are as good of quality. This one, for example, in the analog, I have a lot of trouble with, I wanna say it's this one. Like one of these in here does get pretty patchy on me, just not like a favorite of mine. I feel like these look very similar on the eyes. I do love this shimmer. I think I may wanna get rid of the platinum. Yeah, this one was really, really bad. I love this silver. Oh, here we go with the shimmers, hold on. Then the wild berry. Mm, no, that's a color story I like. Coral is a color story that I really love, plus I have this shimmer. But let me see this shimmer next to this one. I mean, they're pretty similar. This just is like a little bit more fiery. This is hard because I do not love the way that some of these mattes look on the eyes. I don't know, that's such a beautiful shimmer. Again, I kind of feel like here, when I start decluttering some from collections, I feel like I'm breaking up the band, even though I don't even have all of the cutie palettes, I'm still gonna hold on to those ones. I'm just not ready to let it go. And then I have the Nudes palette from Nabla. I really enjoy this one, a basic nudes girl. So, you know, this is something that I can reach for all the time. A lot of cool tones, but some sprinkled in warm tones, pretty decent formula in the shimmers. I'm gonna hold on to that. The Nabla Dreamy palette I also really like, plus I love these pinky tones. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. The Ofra Mini Mix palette, which one was this? This is the Life's a Draft with Samantha March. I actually really enjoy this formula here. How, like, are these dried out or do these still feel good? No, they still feel good. I love the face products in here. These are removable. You know what? I'm gonna take these out because I do not love the eyeshadows on me. I just don't find myself reaching for them because there's not really like a super light shimmer, but I love these face products from Ofra. I feel like Ofra does a really good job with their face products, but I'm not as big of a fan of their eyeshadow formula. So I'm gonna end up decluttering this palette and I'm gonna hold on to these. I'm gonna put these in a different little palette because I really enjoy this formula and there's no sense in getting rid of it. This one here was another collab with Ofra. It's the Beyond Words. I believe this one was Leora. Again, I really like the face products here, but not a color story in the eyes that I really like because I held onto the other ones and I prefer those face formulas better. I'm gonna let this whole palette go. Now let's go over the ones from ABH. I have the Norvina. I don't, you know what, I'm gonna throw those away. I don't find myself reaching for this one very much. Soft Glam is my favorite though. I think Soft Glam 2 is probably even more my favorite, but I'm not going to get rid of this. Soft Glam 2, I have used and used again. I've broken a shade, I've traveled with this, and it comes with Dreamer, which does not come in the large palette. In fact, the light one that you have, I mean, none of these are Dreamer. Why they created like a different shade for this palette is a shame and it's also my favorite shimmer. As you can see, I've made a pretty big dent in it. And because it has this shade, which doesn't come in the big soft glam, I am going to keep it. Subculture. 
I don't know, when, I, when I'm when i ready to start decluttering my ABH palettes, I mean, there are definitely color stories that I would get rid of first. I think this one would be one of them. Not that it's bad, it's just not my jam, but I'm gonna hold on to it. This is Naveau. I mean, this is really pretty. Probably one of my favorite palettes that they launched last year. And Cosmos, I really enjoyed this one from this year. Not going to get rid of that one. This one was Fall Romance. I also enjoyed this one from this year. Different for them. I like these larger pans. I don't know if everybody does, but I do. The Riviera. I'm not going to keep that thing. I think this one was just a fun one. Like, I'm not mad at this color story from ABH, so I'm going to hold on to that. Sultry, I'm going to hold on to. A little bit of a cool tone-ness for me, but some of these shimmers are, I don't know, there's just... The quality in some of these is just good, and, and they don't look like it, but they just perform really well in the eyes. This one is, oh, I already forgot, Rose Metals. This one was another one, I think, last year, right? Or was it earlier this year? No, I think it was last year. Kind of really like an autumn palette. It's It was also just really good. And then finally, Omrezi. I love Barb. I just screamed that. Barb and Anastasia are my favorite shimmers. I love this palette for those two shimmers, so I will probably hold on to those forever. So from the stack, I decluttered two. I definitely do feel good about that, so let me move on to the next stack. This next stack is Too Faced, Urban Decay, and Tarte. Not a huge eyeshadow lover from any of these brands, really. Let's start with the Too Faced ones first. So I have the Pop Tarts collection. This is the Brown Sugar Cinnamon. It is a warm tone color story. I liked this one a little bit better than the one underneath it, which is Frosted Strawberry because it came with lighter shimmers. Well, boy. So I was talking away and it was not recording. That is totally my fault. Let's start over. So the Too Faced Brown Sugar one, I was telling you guys, I just don't love the overall color story, but I feel like it's just a lot drier of a formula in both the mattes and the shimmers. I have a lot of palettes in my collection. This is just not a warm tone color story, story I will reach for, so I'm gonna declutter this one. Same thing with the Frosted Strawberry. It's just drier. It's missing a light shimmer for me. This one here is like a matte with sparkles. So I'm gonna declutter this. Same thing with the Pinker Times Ahead palette. I feel like the shimmers in here, some of them are good. They're inconsistent. It's a lighter color story overall. Not a whole lot of depth I can get out of this. Just not my thing, won't reach for it, so I'm going to declutter it. But the Italian Spritz, on the other hand, I feel like was just a lot different. Not only are some of these shimmers more thick and foiled, I feel like it's not as dry of a formula. Some of these are very fun, smells good. I'm gonna hold on to this one. And then I was talking away about the Tarte palettes. This Sweet Tarte Cravings palette from the Sugar Rush line is amazing. Like the intensity in these shimmers is fantastic. Like it is absolutely special. And I don't know Tarte to do stuff like this. Even though it's a darker color story and it might not be everybody's preference, I just think the quality overall is freaking fabulous. Same thing with the mattes, they're super rich but they're good quality. Some of them are not like super opaque, but I just think this is a really good quality palette, honestly. So it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's mine. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. These ones were part of a collection from last Christmas. Ooh, you guys, these also have a little bit of sentimental value. I bought these and then came back and did a haul, like after I came back from California. These just remind me of that haul not everything does i hate stuff with sentimental value i i mean i hate the feeling that this gives me it's like good and bad at the same time it was like all i wanted to do was turn to makeup to make myself feel good and this i don't know i think i have to hold on to that one these were the gilded and glamour from the amazonian clay line and i want to say yeah it came in a set but this cool tone one i will not reach for so even though they came in a set, I just feel like this one I may have taken back with me the second time I traveled. So that's why that one has a little bit more sentimental value than this one. I'm going to declutter that one. Let's move on into Urban Decay. The Naked Reloaded. I haven't reached for this in forever. This is a drier formula anyway. I have such better quality in my collection. This is one of the first palettes that I bought myself that was like expensive when I was building my collection three years ago, but I haven't reached for it since then. Not a huge fan of the formula. I feel like it's a lot drier than, you know, indie brand or higher end that I'm just enjoying more. So I'm gonna declutter that. I'm also gonna declutter the Naked 3. This is a little bit too cool toned for me. 
and I haven't reached for it in a while, but the one from Robin Eisenberg, I am going to hold on to. This one is a little bit newer. I feel like this formula wasn't quite as dry as these ones, even though I bought these like brand new. I mean, I think they still make these too. Um, I just think this one's a little bit more fun. You can't get this anymore. It was a limited edition. I feel like they have something for Rob another collab from Robin Eisenberg on their website now. I'm not sure what it is, but it's not this palette, but I'm still going to hold on to it and get a little bit more use. So out of this stack, I actually decluttered more than I kept. So I decluttered six and I held on to four. I feel pretty good about that. Okay, I missed two from Too Faced. This is the Mariale More Caliente. I am thinking that this is a collab with Mariale, even though I don't know who that is. I wanna say I picked this up a while ago. This is just a color story that I really like. I don't think it's as dry of a formula as you guys heard me say, Too Faced is kind of on the drier side. So this one I'm gonna hold on to. I'm also gonna hold on to the Born This Way Sunset Strip from Too Faced. It's a nice neutral one. I think it's a really popular one anyway, and they still make this. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. And then I have a ton that are like singles. I just have one-offs of each of these brands. So I'm just gonna start grabbing them. They're like to my right and left. I have one from M Cosmetics that is the Divine Skies Eyeshadow Palette in Magic Hour. I didn't love this formula. I hear a lot of people talking about it, but it's just, it's light and I, I wanted a little bit more from it. I don't think it's bad, so I'm gonna hold on to it. It's just not very pigmented. It's very desaturated shades. I have one from Real Her in Dream So Big. This was something I got in a boxy charm. It's kind of cool tones. It really performs surprisingly, but it's just not a palette I'm gonna reach for over others. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. Then I have one from Aether Beauty. They are no longer a brand, they have closed. I did like this, but because it's just not something that I reach for or think of reaching for over other palettes because they have closed down, I'm gonna declutter this one as well. I have one from Dose of Colors. It's the I Love Sarah He. I really love this color story. Plus I love these shimmers. I so wanna hold on to this like until it goes bad. If you guys can see like that black one with just the multi-dimensional sparkles plus that really crazy teal one, I just think it's really fun. So I'm gonna hold on to that. Then Violet Voss Sunkissed Summer. I really enjoy this formula. I really enjoy some of these shimmers. I just have a really good time with this palette. I like these tones together with the mauves, it might seem silly, but I think it's really good. I'm gonna hold on to this. I only have one palette from Lunar Beauty. It's the Nude Prism palette. I picked this one specifically because it's very wearable. Very, very good formula. The shimmers are tremendous. I feel like Manny and Laura Lee have the same shimmer formula. I have said that before. I like the gradient. I'm gonna hold on to this one. I have one here from Dominique Cosmetics. It's the Latte 2. I think I want to hold on to this one. I, I have not reached for this since I've like tested it, but still it's a color story that I like and I think it's pretty decent quality. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. I have one from KVD Beauty back before it rebranded. It's like a wet dry palette. I honestly think it's really good and I think the shimmers are really fun. Let's like swatch some of these cause they're really quite intense. Yeah, see I'm not ready to let it go. Like it still performs really, really well. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. This is such a mishmash stack. Wander Beauty, Sweet Escape, also love this. These shades are a little bit desaturated, but the shimmers are so beautiful. It's really pretty color story. Just kind of the neutral looks I'm looking for. Oh, I had two from Wander Beauty. Oh, I said it was a one-off, it's not. This is the Wanderous Escape, also one that I really like. Shimmer formula reminds me of Sigma. So I'm gonna hold on to that one as well. The Jaclyn Hill Bling Boss with Morphe. I do not need to keep this. I do not reach for this. I have other shades I would rather reach for. Not that the quality was bad, it's just I don't buy more. I just didn't love their business model, if I'm being honest. And uh, I also don't buy Jaclyn Cosmetics stuff anymore. Not even sure she's gonna keep the business up and running. So this is irrelevant for me. I'm gonna get rid of that. However, <laughs> KKW Beauty, I like this. Um, I really do enjoy this palette and it's uh, less problematic for me. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. I do love this one. This is the Oma Beauty Black Magic palette. I wanna say, yeah, Royal Heritage, because they have several Black Magic palettes and I keep just calling this one Black Magic. Oh, this is delightful. So that one definitely stays. 
I only have one here from Patrick Ta, so instead of me blinding you, let me open it. This is Major Dimension 2, so this is the more rosy one and not uh, the more neutrally brown shade. I just recently pulled this back out and have been using it. I had to pull this off of my vanity. I'm gonna hold on to that one. I have one here from Sydney Grace. It is the Be Mine. She came out with a light and a medium and I picked up the medium. No, this one was deep. So maybe it was medium and deep. I can't remember, but I definitely got the deep one because I just liked the tones a little bit better. So I'm gonna for sure hold on to that one. It's a really nice formula. I'd like to try more Sydney Grace palettes in 2024 because I think it was really good quality. I'm gonna get rid of this thing though. I have one here from NARS. I'm probably gonna hold on to this. This was last holiday. This was the Stargaze eyeshadow palette. I feel like it was just colorful color story for them with like that pop of violet. I do think that their formula is a little bit dry. This one is a topper. The shimmers are okay, but the mattes are like a little bit dry. They, they could be a little bit more creamy, but because it's the only NARS one that I have and I didn't like hate it, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to this one. I have one from Prada, again, reflective packaging. This is the Dimensions Durable Multi Def Effect Eyeshadow in Color Story 3. It's nice. These feel like creams. The shimmer is actually really nice for a luxury brand shadow. I think the packaging is really, really cheap though for the price of this, but I'm gonna hold on to it. I have one here from Hermes. Same thing, just a quad, but I still feel like the shades performed. These are not as creamy as the Prada ones. These are much drier. It's new to me and it's, you know, again, I always say like so freaking expensive. So I'm gonna hold on to that. I have one from Rowan. It's the 1111 palette. I'm assuming that's how you say it. I didn't love this as much when I first tried it as I do now that I'm just so into single shadows. So I think it's a really interesting formula. It's not the creamiest. Um, some of these textures are a little bit different from one another, but still I'm enjoying this one more now than I did originally. Do I wanna keep the sleeve on it? I tend to do that. I have one from Mineral Fusion. This is uh, Girls Night Out, I think is the color story. I didn't love this shade on me. It was just too purple. These are satins. This is basically like a sparkle shade. So it wasn't a very good intense palette for me. I just, I didn't find enjoyment out of this and this did retail for like $25. So I'm gonna declutter this. And then I have one from Made by Mitchell. It's the Mini Mitchell Volume 1. I got this free with purchase in an order, I wanna say from Beauty Bay. I think I'm thinking of that correctly because I bought some blurshes, highlighters, bronzer, basically all the formulas of the blurshes that he makes. It's just not a color story thing for me. And the shimmers, I just have a hard time like pairing with some of the mattes. They're not my favorite formula anyway because they're on the more satin side. They're just not very reflective. So I'm gonna declutter this one. And then finally, the item beauty in my element. I just talked about this, how much I really like this palette. I'm grappling as to whether or not to keep it because you can't get item beauty anymore and I have these shades elsewhere. Actually, I am gonna get rid of this. It's not that it's bad, it was really good quality. In fact, I feel like a lot of item beauty's products were decent. Like whoever she went to to have things manufactured, I think they did a really good job. It's just, it, it's gonna get ignored. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So out of this stack, I ended up decluttering six. So I feel good about that. Let me grab the next stack. All right, this one is Ace Beauté, Laura Geller, Sephora. I've got some Lorac Melt and Kiko Milano here. It's a mishmash, but I think I have more than one palette from each of the brands. So I have two from the Sephora Destinations collection. One of these you can still get and one of you can't, or one you can't. I don't know what these ones are, I don't know that they have the names on here. Like they have the name on the website. They're just not printed on these packages. So one is a warmer tone, kind of fun pops of color, color story. This one is more light and kind of pastel-y. These are dry. The shimmers are dry. I just don't like for Sephora's palettes. They're just not my cup of tea in terms of formulation. So I'm gonna declutter both of those. Laura Geller, I have two from the Delectables. This one is the Earthy Essentials. And then this one is the Romance in Rose. This one is like a green, very earthy tones. It's just not a product that I like because it's so inset in the pans. I pick up shimmers with my finger and this I can get like just the tip of my finger in there. It's really just 
it's pretty and light and every day, but I have these tones elsewhere. I don't enjoy this pan style. So I'm gonna declutter that one. And I'm also gonna declutter this one. It's the same exact thing. It's nice. It's just very hard for me to get into the pans because they're so inset like this. It's just not my style. Honestly, I just find other shadows are just more convenient than these. I think Laura Geller and her powder products are freaking amazing. So if I'm gonna recommend anything to you guys, it's the blush and bronzer. Just not the eyeshadows for me, so I'm gonna declutter those. Two here from Ace Beauté, I have the Violet Sage palette. I like the Ace Beauté formula. I don't know if this one is like the reformulation. I just, I don't, do I love this color story? I think I'm gonna hold on to this one for a little while longer. I like the greens and I like the burgundies. That's really something I got into in 2023. So I feel like I have to hold on to this one. This one is a recent release from them. This is the Mystic Romance. One of my favorite fall palettes ever. The formula here is super pigmented. These shimmers are gorgeous. It's a really fun color story if you like fall, like deeper shadows. So I'm definitely holding on to that one. Then three from Lorac. I really enjoy the Lorac formula. This is a mini pro palette. I love this. I just love the shimmers. I love the simplicity of this. This one, I don't even know if it, it's called Sparkling is the color story, I think, of the palette name. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. This is Soleil. Oh, the shade names are on this. It's so annoying. You know, some of these tones on the eyes looked very similar. I'm just not ready to part with this yet. I, I really enjoy this simple everyday formula from them. And then Fairy Tale Forest, much nicer. Some fun greens in here. And yeah, I just, I enjoy the formula. So I'm gonna hold on to the Lorac palettes. I have two from Melt. First time I tried Melt in 2023. I actually really liked these palettes. I have heard some people say they were terrible, but I don't know any other formula to compare against. So I thought these were damn good from Melt Cosmetics. This one is the Earth one from the Bad Side Zodiac collection. I wanna say they launched four. Yeah, Earth, Wind, Air, okay, yeah, Carrie, hello. And uh, I picked up this one because it's a little bit of an earthier, kind of grungier tone. I thought it was really nice. And then I have Air. And I thought this was beautiful. And I love this shimmer out here. I just feel like everything performed really well. So I'm holding on to that one as well. And then I have two from Kiko Milano. One here is, oh, this one is so good. It's one of my favorites. They don't make this anymore. Just like a lot of their collections, they come and go. They're limited edition. This is the Beauty Essentials eyeshadow palette in Earth Sides. So maybe they had two different color stories because this one says 02 but the Beauty Essentials collection, I don't think everything is available. And this eyeshadow palette is definitely not, but it is so buttery soft. Can you guys see how like much I've dug into these shimmers? Honestly, it's such a good neutral palette if you're looking for something a little more desaturated. It's gorgeous. This one I just got in their advent calendar. This is the holiday premiere made to shine eyeshadow palette in 01 color symphony. So this is an all shimmer palette that was made specifically for their advent calendar, which is called holiday premiere. I haven't even tried this, only swatched it. So I'm definitely holding on to that one. So from this one, I decluttered four. Next stack is a mishmash, Sigma, Bobbi Brown, Laura Lee, Cara Beauty, Rare Beauty, House Labs. Let's get into it. Well, let's go over the Sigma stuff first. I have the Magnifique palette. You know, honestly, this is just not my color story. The other Sigma palettes that I have in my collection are, are more up my alley. I just, I don't know, I didn't love all these tones together, like the purplish with the deep brown. So I'm gonna declutter that one. I do like the rosy eyeshadow palette. It's my kind of color story. I like the Sigma formula though. I think that the mattes and the shimmers perform really well. It reminds me of Lorac and it reminds me of Milani's formula. Like both of those have a very similar shimmer formula to Sigma. So I'm holding on to this one. Then the new mod, do I need this? No, my kind of color story, very neutrals, very everyday wearable, holding on to that one. Corderosa is a little warm tone to light really enjoy color stories like this. This is a palette that I am keeping. And then Alice in Wonderland. I actually really do enjoy that. I think I wanna hold on to this one because it's just so cool. Uh, I love the teals and blues in here with half the palette kind of being a neutral color story. So I really enjoyed this one, holding on to that one. Let's do my Bobbi Browns. I love both of these. This is their Luxe Eyeshadow Quad. This one was Lunar New Year, so you can't get this one anymore. This one came out, I wanna say, in the very beginning of 2023. One satin shade, 
one glitter, actually two glitters, and then one shimmer. And honestly, it's just, it's a really good formula. Like if you're into kind of cool, that's kind of like a glitter. If you're into just fun shades that sparkle, these Bobbi Brown limited edition ones are so cute. They basically get me every single time. I can't help but get my hands on these little glittery things. So even though you cannot get this anymore, I am gonna hold on to it. This one I believe you still can get your hands on, even though this was a limited holiday edition for 2022, there still are retailers that sell this, I'm pretty sure. So it's fun color story, mostly satins, couple of like glitter shades. Still, I really like this formula and I think the packaging is also amazing. I have three palettes from Laura Lee. It's the Whimsical Nudes. This one I'm grappling with. I don't love these tones. I don't know. The Nude Nudie 2, really good. Much more up my color story alley. And then the original Nudie Patootie. I feel like this one is super wearable and the shades still feel good. So I'm gonna hold on to these two, but I'm gonna let go of Whimsical Nudes. Two from Rare Beauty. I wanna say this one came out this year, but it could have been last year. This is the Give Yourself Grace palette. I actually really like this. I may have even decluttered this once and then repurchased it, but I still think it's a really nice everyday wearable palette. I think this comes in two color stories, but it's the only one that I think I liked of this style, so I'm gonna hold on to it. And I've had both of the limited edition like glitter sets. Even though they're limited edition, they're still here. This one is Confident Energy. And I think it's a decent shimmer formula. A Little bit on the drier side, but really thin. It's, it actually performs really well. And I decluttered the other one and I'm kind of sad that I did because now they're kind of colors that I would normally reach for, but I'm gonna hold on to that one. Three palettes here from Cara Beauty. First one is the Capricorn palette. I don't know, I like Cara Beauty. I just don't love this color story. I feel like I'm gonna let this go. The 70s palette, I have not used a ton, but it's still beautiful. Neutralies with purples and teals. I'm gonna hold on to that one. This one, do I want this one? Yeah, I like this one. You're very neutral, like pinkies. So I'm gonna hold on to this one, but I am gonna declutter that Capricorn one. And then the Tati Beauty Volume 1. I bought this after the fact. Like when I was first starting to build my, build my collection, and I must have bought this on like Poshmark or Mercari or something. I just, do I need this? I actually thought the mattes were a little bit patchy. I liked the concept of it. The concept was great. Matte sequin metallic glitter, great. That's fantastic. But I didn't love the mattes. So I'm gonna declutter this. I do not need to keep this at all. I never reach for it. It just sits around looking at me. And then two from House Labs. I will open these. These are the Super Neutrals Volume 1 and Volume 2. I'm not a huge fan of this formula. I've said this in my dedicated video, I said this in my eyeshadow ranking, that these are very desaturated and they're infused with a ton of skincare, so they're lighter in nature. These are biodegradable glitters in this shimmer, which is really nice. They're very beautiful shimmers. I just don't love the desaturated nature of these shades, how patchy they look, and they're not very blendable. They seem to overblend in most cases, and these two shades out here, they're not very good deepening shades. They don't deepen, uh, they don't look really good on my eyes in just the tones that they are. But as much as I really dislike these outside of the three shades of shimmers, I think because these are recent launches and if there is ever a time where she re-releases, I would 100% bring this formula out to do a comparison. So I am going to hold on to these for that reason and I may even reach into those for the shimmer formula because I think the shimmer formula was amazing. So from the stack, I am decluttering four. These are a lot of my indie brand shadows, some hip dots, some rude cosmetics in here. So let's get to, I'm gonna move all of these aside again. And let's start with Glam Light actually. I have the Chucky X Glam Light palette. I really enjoy this. Like it's a super grungy vibe, but honestly the quality in Glam Light is really, really good. Plus I'm a really big fan of the shimmer formula. You know that Nabla one that had the silver shimmer in it? I feel like this is probably my best silver, but if I'm looking for something super deep and maroon and grungy, I like to reach for this palette and I think the quality is really good, so I'm gonna hold on to it. Berrylicious, the Strawberry Shortcake palette. 
another favorite of mine. The shimmers in here are just delectable. I really love the, again, matte formula here is so, so good. And this is a newer palette to my collection, so I'm gonna hold on to that one. This one I kind of went back and forth on. I've dumped out most of the sparkles because mine kind of came unglued like on the sides here. And so the sparkles are just like always falling out. Uh, this is the Michaela X Glam Light Part 1. I did not buy Part 2 because I'm just not really into like that many greens. I think this one is really nice. And again, I'm such a fan of their formula overall. You've got some neutrals in here, nice pops of color. I just think it's really good. I don't reach into every one of these shades all the time, but the shimmers are just really fun. And I am, again, just a fan of their formula. I have one from Pastel Roses. I don't think I'm an overall fan of their matte formula. This is the Floral Temptations palette. I really enjoy the color story for a lighter, more ethereal look, but these mattes are so desaturated. They don't build up depth very well. The shimmers here are very crumbly. You can see they're like falling into my matte shades. I love the shimmer formula though. That's the one thing about this palette that I really enjoy. I don't enjoy this packaging either. I find it to be kind of just a little bit on the cheaper side. It kind of bends there. I don't dislike this palette, but I love it for the shimmers. It's just the mattes that I, I don't love. And so for me, it's not like a kind of all in one palette. I end up reaching for different mattes and then reaching for some of these shimmers, but I'm still going to hold on to it. I have two here from Glaminatrix. This is the Sugar and Spice palette, one of my favorites. A row of pastels with shimmers, a gradient of mattes, and then these delectable shimmers at the top. This is so good. This is such a good inner corner, like shifty highlight. Some of these are so delightful. I honestly love this palette and putting looks together with just these shades, which is super weird for me. Not typically what I do, but I'm thoroughly enjoying that formula. So I'm going to hold on to it. The Nearly Natural palette, my favorite of this year. Greens, burgundies, some neutrals, lovely, lovely shimmer formula. I don't know, I just, I couldn't go wrong with this palette. So I'm holding on to that one for sure. I have one here from Beauty Bay, it's the Dark Fantasy. I think of their shimmer formula is very similar to that of Glam Light. It's just on the softer side, very smooth. Again, this is like the burgundy greens that I was just so into this year. Very deep color story. But again, reach into this for shimmers more than the mattes here. But I'm, I'm really liking the Beauty Bay formula right now. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. I have two here from Hip Dot. I haven't even tried this one. This was in collaboration with Korn and then Evanescence. I wanted these the moment they said that they were being released because I am like such a 90s kid, even though Evanescence probably dropped in the early 2000s. I think Korn was like the late 90s when the Fall of the Leader album came out. I just really wasn't a fan of this color story. This shimmer, this matte, this shimmer, they all look the same on the eyes. I just, I didn't love it. I didn't love this tone of brown. I don't know, two pressed glitters. It wasn't my favorite and I was really, really disappointed. But for nostalgia reasons, I'm not ready to let this go yet. And again, this one I haven't even, I haven't even worn on my eyes. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about the color story because some of these look super similar. And then this deeper blue shimmer kind of looks like it might mesh with these. I don't know yet, but then there's only one pressed glitter in here. You do have a light shimmer, which is so nice. This one doesn't have that. Like this and this shimmer, this ends up looking very similar. Like it looks gray in the pan, but it's, it's a duochrome, so it shifts brown. I like having the lighter shimmer in here. So I haven't had a chance to play with this one for the blues just yet. So I am going to hold on to this one until I get a chance to play with it. But I did think twice about decluttering the corn one. And then I have two here from Rude Cosmetics from the Mentos collection. This one was the pastel palette. Row of shimmers, row of mattes, row of glitters. Terrible quality. These mattes don't even show up on me. The shimmers are a little bit on the dry side. The glitters are fun, but they're not the best quality. So I'm gonna declutter this. This was the neon one. I thought it would be fun, but I don't love the quality on this. So I'm gonna declutter this one as well. I have one from Bella Beauté Bar. This is the Star Cross Lovers palette. This was my second favorite palette of the year. Just such a beautiful pinky color story. Some of these shimmers are so delightful. This duochrome over here, so, so good. So I'm definitely holding on to that one. And I have two Unearthly Cosmetics palettes. The Devour palette that came out for Halloween. Again, I love greens and burgundies. These three duochromes in the corner here, amazing inner corner highlights are all over the lid. 
I love the quality of the mattes and the shimmer, so I'm holding on to that one. The sleepover palette I wanted for, it feels like the longest time, but I didn't love some of these tones on my eyes. I think they looked a little too childish on me personally. I normally love stuff like this, but I feel like I'm getting away from brighter pinks at the current moment. I do love the quality of this, and I only have two Unearthly Cosmetics palettes, so I'm gonna hold onto this one as well. So from the stack, I only decluttered two. I wanna mention here, like a preface to the next upcoming stacks. I feel like these are some of my more high-end palettes coming up. A couple more of my favorite indie brands. I just don't foresee myself getting rid of a ton of those, but we'll see. I don't know how I'm gonna feel once I start getting into it. So let me go grab the next stack. All right, the next one has some indie brands. This is Unique Beauty, Lethal Adept. There's Danessa in here and there's also Max, which obviously not an indie brand, but kind of a mixture in here. Let's go over my two from Lethal Cosmetics first. These are the only two that I have. And honestly, I did not love this formula. This one is the Destiny palette. I wanted to try Lethal, but I didn't want to spend a ton of money on my first palette. So I picked up these six pans. I need to swatch these because I feel like the shimmer formula was really good. It was just that the mattes were not my favorite. They were very lightly pigmented. See, even these I don't absolutely love. They're a little bit of a drier formula than I'm used to. And I've heard that Lethal has such a better formula than this. So it might honestly be these two palettes that I have that are kind of on the drier side. Let me swatch some of these mattes here. See, it's, they're just, that one's nice, but this one's a little bit, I feel like I gotta build it up. I don't know. I don't think I love these. I would love to test some more formulations from the brand in maybe larger palettes or ones that are pretty popular and have better reviews because I just wasn't over the moon with this formulation. I don't know if I wanna hold on to these yet. I feel like if I did, it would be to personally compare other formulations to this one. This one is Memento, just for my own comparisons. Again, I kind of liked the shimmers, but I felt like it was just a little dry. I feel like I want to keep these out and test these again. So I'm going to chopping block these. I didn't do that with the eyeshadow palettes, but I've been doing that with all of my other makeup. But these are definitely ones I want to test again because it's been a while since I've tried them. And I don't want to just declutter for the sake of decluttering. But again, if I were to purchase another Lethal Cosmetics palette, I would want to test the formula against this to see if these um, are just, I don't know, on the drier side. But anyway, I'm going to chopping block of those. So holding on to them. And then Adept Cosmetics Heather Austin palette. I want to get more from Adept too. The shimmers in here are amazing. The multi-chromes, the duochromes. I even like the mattes in here. I kind of felt like I didn't like them originally, but I really do. Having those two mattes in there, I feel like is good with those shimmers. I'm holding on to that one. And then I have the Ninhydrin palette, an almost all shimmer palette. Don't love the mattes in here. Like I could go without those, honestly, and just have an all shimmer palette. I don't know what the purpose was. I feel like they're just a little silly. I think you can like smoke them out and then like bring a shimmer in and it's okay, but but still, I mean, I kind of feel like they didn't need to do that. They're maybe not like the colors that I would use, you know? I'm not gonna use this one to pair with every one of these shimmers or this one to pair with any everyone. I would use this one to pair with these two, like mostly, that's how my eye thinks, but I'm for sure holding onto this one. I feel like I wanna get more adept cosmetics. Then I have one from Danessa Myricks. This is the Lightwork 5 IM palette, an all shimmer palette. Again, really nice formulations in these. There's like seven different types of shimmers in here. What she says on her website is to build a look going down. So you're getting like the full range of blues in this row, oranges, pinks, purples, you get it. I really like this. I don't think I would buy any more of her IM releases, but I liked this one. I know a lot of her other ones to be slightly different. Like she's had some center pans that were of a different formula that I think you need to use wet, but these ones you can all use dry. I'm trying to figure out the way that this goes. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. I'm holding on to all of my Macs. These were the Connecting Color releases that came out this year. I love this packaging. I think the quality on these are so amazing. The mattes are beautiful. The shimmers are really just appropriate for every day. They're not overdone. This one is the Encrypted Kryptonite which is nice, it's not my favorite, but I'm gonna hold on to it anyway because I feel like I've collected these palettes at this point. I don't think anyone was like over the moon with these palettes as much as I was this year. That's just how I felt about it. 
darker color story but holding on to this one the bronze influence and the only thing in this palette i wish was different was this one was like a deeper brown so i could build in the outer corner because this is like a green shade i just didn't like pairing it with the other ones but i'm going to hold on to that one rose lens again i wish they had a deeper matte in here this is like a shimmer which is okay but uh, still wish it was a matte anyway like that one my two favorite are these two this is embedded in burgundy one of my favorite palettes this year because of these like deepening shades and it was just so beautiful on the eyes so i'm holding on to that one here i am repeating myself and this is future flame this is the larger 12 pan, I want to say. One, two, three, four, yeah. Larger 12 pan. And this one was the warm tone color story. And I freaking love this one as well. So holding on to those. Also holding on to all of my unique beauty. Also another brand that no one really talks about. And also right now it looks like their website is under maintenance. Like nothing is open on their website. I don't know what that's about. So I have the Me, Myself, and I palette. These smaller magazine styles all come with six shades. They come with three mattes and three shimmers. You guys, some of these shimmers are to die for. Oh, there we go. I moved some of the top layer. Some of these shimmers are fabulous. This one is a little bit of a funky color story for me because I don't love like this mauve tone with that orange, but sometimes I'll just use this with this or this with this and then these two with this one. I love them for the shimmers anyway, so I'm holding on to that. This is the Africa Volume 1. Yes, one of my favorite color stories of 2023 that I tried. It's just my kind of mauve maroonish. Look at this duochrome right here, and it's really fun. The Pamper Me palette. Mostly love the shimmers in here. They're just amazing. They're, they're so, so good. The Tribes palette, a little bit too warm for me in the mattes, but still love the shimmers. And then the Japan Volume 1, so good, so, so good. Let me swatch this one. Yeah, this one is still creamy. This is what the other one should have felt like. I mean, it's intense. It's intense. Look at this. So if you don't like, you know, these molten foil shades you're not gonna like some of their shimmers so i'm gonna hold on to all of those i do not want to show the cases of these because they are all super reflective but i have three of their releases from this year which i'm sad like their site being under maintenance and they had three new releases it's giving main character is an all shimmer palette also amazing you just heard me talk about their Shimmer formula, and most of these are duochromes. Yeah, I think all of them actually are duo and multi-chromes. Holding on to that one. This one is Glow Up. I wish this one had a deeper matte shade, but otherwise, so beautiful. And this one is like an inner corner or all over the lid is like a delicious little multi-chrome. Yes, ma'am. And then Everyday Diva. Again, wish this matte here was not so desaturated that it built up, it was just more intense. And then it would have been a kind of nice, like warmer toned palette, but still I love it. This duochrome over here is amazing. I, I love shimmers that are like that, that are duochrome-y, but they're so smooth. I did not declutter any from this stack. I knew that was gonna happen, but two of these are going into a chopping block. I just don't know how many more I'm gonna end up decluttering. This stack has Odin's Eye and Kaleidos. So I actually think there's some in here that I can get rid of because I don't reach for every single one of these. In the world of Kaleidos, these quads were not my favorite. They were too monochromatic for me. They looked very similar on the eyes. These ones, I can't remember like what the collection was, but Glowing Iris, I don't know. I mean, these, these two shades just looked super similar on my eye. And then this one kind of looked a little bit muddy. I don't even know if I love these ones. And then I don't remember, this one was like, who the heck knows, because it's not on the palette. And then this one, do I love all of these? I just don't build like all purple looks like ever. I don't have one this smoky. I kind of like the purple in this one. Honestly, I feel like I'm gonna get rid of these two and then hold on to these ones. I just, I'll never reach for these. I love the packaging. And again, I feel like I'm breaking up the band but this just looked like a muddy mess on me. I mean, I, I think on my skin tone, not that it's bad quality or anything. And then again, I just never reach for purples and I have purples like this other places. Like I reach for purples, but just not like in a monochromatic way. 
So I'm gonna declutter these. I did not think I was gonna do that. But I'm gonna hold on to the two older ones because I like these just a little bit better. One that's, you know, more smoky and then one that's more neutral and wearable. Ooh, I didn't think I was gonna do that at all. Okay. And then I have some of their six pans here. I guess I only have one left in the cardboard packaging. So this one is Futurism 5 Electro Turquoise. I wanna hold on to these. I, I don't have any issues with the quality on them. I think this one is fun. I know that they are phasing these out. They're not gonna make them anymore, but they're still available on a discount on their website. I did just check the other day. So I'm gonna hold on to that one for now. I really enjoyed this one because it's more neutral. It's the Futurism 6 Sashimi City, pretty neutral. I think I bought this one first because I was like, oh, I'm not dipping my toes into color just yet. Back when I was just wearing neutral shadow. So still enjoy this. Still want to hold on to this. I like to keep the shade names. I think I have the other boxes. They're just in the closet. So I am going to put this one in there just because I feel like it'll prevent me from reaching for it if I keep it on there. Futurism 3 Astro Pink. This one was the second one that I got. A little bit of neutral, but pops of color in there, and I thought this one was really fun. Again, holding on to all of them. And then the Escape Pod palette. This is the last one that I have. Do I wanna hold on to this? I honestly did not love this color story. And the shimmers, I just, I don't know if I felt like they were some of my absolute favorite. They're on the lighter side, whereas I kind of prefer like this formula, this just really molten, creamy formula. I just felt like the shimmers here were maybe a little bit drier than even the six pans that they have. And it's funny because I really wanted this palette for quite a while. It's pretty, I, I, I literally never reach for it. I'm gonna see like where the brand goes and what the brand does. I'm gonna hold on to it for now. If I go back and forth on it, like clearly I don't need to beat myself up over it and I just need to hold on to it. And then for Odin's Eye, I have the Alva 2 Mini Sky Palette. This is the only six pan that I have. One, two, three, four. I mean, I call it six pan, I guess, because this is a duo shade. I really like this color story. I'm gonna hold on to this one. There are just some in here that I really wanna pull back out and see how they perform again. I really don't need this though. That's unnecessary of me. So yeah, I'm gonna hold on to that one. And then I have the three collaborations from 2023, the Floristory Sea Talk and the Planet Spirit palette. And you know, these are fairly new, so I don't wanna get rid of them. This one's like a foresty floral color story, more on the neutral side from Makeup Just For Fun and then Laura May Beauty, a little bit of a mermaidy vibe with some neutrals and then Planet Spirit is all bright. I'm not ready to let these go, so I'm gonna hold on to that. Then the Saga of Freya. Do I wanna keep this? This is the book style one. I wanna see how well these shimmers are still performing. I mean, they still feel really, really creamy and nice. And this is honestly a color story that I really enjoy. I thought I might get rid of this one, but I think there's another one in here that I'm gonna end up getting rid of. So it's that one and then this side. I honestly really enjoy some of these shimmers more than the other side. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. I'd like to pull this one and the other six pan back out and get some more use out of it. But the one that I think I'm gonna let go of is the original Alva palette. I don't think this was their best work. Of course, they don't do the circle pans anymore. I feel like some of these shimmers are a little bit on the dry side. Yeah, see some of the oils have like leaked out. This is the first one that I picked up. It's on the older side anyway. And if I'm going for these like neutrally maroon shades, I feel like the first side of this one was really nice. I don't know if I can pass this along because these shimmers are really, really dry. And some of these like even leaked into the actual cardboard. Like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is a lot of leakage from the oils in here that have leaked out. So I feel like it's just time to kind of let this go. Like this needs to just go in the trash. It's kind of expired. So I'm gonna declutter that one. Then I have the Hella palette with Angelica Neekfest. Not my favorite color story, but I know she really loves it. But some of these shimmer in here are really good. If you're looking for a grungy green, it's nice. I'm gonna hold on to this one. One of my favorite palettes. This was my favorite palette of 2022. Amazing, like maroons and greens. I feel like this was the palette that made me love reds, maroons, and greens together. And I feel like the quality in here was, 
I don't know, just quite amazing. I know when they re-released these, I did not go back for the other one, but this is just the color story that I liked the most. And I didn't pick up the new releases from this year. I don't know if I'm sad about it, but the color stories just didn't look like that I'd get a ton of everyday use out of. And so it prevented me from getting it. But this, this is such a favorite palette of mine. So I'm for sure holding on to that. And then the Jewels and Gem palette that released this year. Um, it's cool tone. It's, it's nice. It's not my favorite in terms of like the shimmer formula for whatever reason, some of these just for me felt a little bit inconsistent and some of the cooler tones, maybe not my jam all the time, but I'm still going to hold on to it. Surprisingly, I ended up decluttering three from this. I think the packaging is the thing that's going to get me the most. I don't feel bad about it. I feel good. Let's do my Huda Beauty next. And I have some of her smaller palettes and then mostly her larger ones. So the Empower palette, this is her second to last release. I really like warm tones in the summer. I like all these shimmers. This is probably my least favorite palette from her, to be honest. I think it was good. It was just like a lot of inconsistencies in the shimmers, honestly. Some of them are like foiled, chunky messes. They're not even like well-oiled. They just weren't my favorites. They're just different, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Like, see this one? Not the greatest quality. That one's better. This one's on the lighter side. Like I've been swatching a ton of shimmers during this video and these just don't rank at the top for me. They just weren't my overall favorite, but I'm a Huda Beauty like palette collector, I think at this point. So I'm definitely not ready to let the larger palettes go. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. Then I have the Rose Quartz palette. I really enjoy this color story because it's just pinkies and like neutrals. And even though people like hate these weird like shades like this, I don't know why, but I love them. I think they're kind of cool. Anyway, pretty fun, pretty light and ethereal. The nude palette was the first one. The new nude was the first one that I bought from her. Two pressed glitters, still one of my favorite palettes, I feel like. I hope these aren't drying out. No, these still feel good. So I'm definitely holding on to that one. My second purchase from Huda was the Naughty palette. And I was convinced at this point after having tried the new nude in this one that I was absolutely going to collect and buy every one of her larger palette releases. So I'm still holding on to this one, the Mercury Retrograde. The third release, again, super lovely. So yeah, the Empower palette just kind of wasn't my thing. And then the newest release that she has is the Pretty Grunge palette. I do really like this one. I like the kind of cool tones and then warmer tone side. I just think that's fun. I think the quality in here was pretty darn good. So I'm holding on to this one. Then I have three of her smaller ones. Here's where I'm not sure. They don't even make these Obsessions ones anymore in like this cardboard packaging. I don't think you can buy these on her website. This was the Ruby Obsessions one. I am going to declutter this because I never reach for this and I don't think the quality was as good, so bye. And then chocolate brown and caramel brown. Again, I didn't find the quality here to be as good as her larger palettes, and I literally never reach for these. Do I want these? You know what? These have to go into a chopping block because I honestly haven't reached for these in so long. I honestly don't know how I feel about them, so it's a lot of honestlys. I'm gonna chopping block those, but hold on to them for now. I've actually only chopping blocked, I think four at this point, which is pretty good to not remember four. So anyway, only decluttered one from this stack. Here we go with the eyeshadow all over the place. Let's go into Natasha next. I don't have a huge Natasha Denona collection. Um, I feel like I just started to build it really. I wanna say in 2023, maybe the end of 2022. So here's what I've got. I've got these, I don't know what these are, the larger pans in the six, five pan rather. And I don't know if I love these over the smaller ones. I kind of like these ones more for travel. I like this color story because I love this yellow. This one is in the Jubilee. This was a BoxyCharm exclusive. I want to say all of these were like somewhat of a BoxyCharm exclusive or a subscription exclusive. I like this one. So I think this one is unique and cool. And I love this blue semi-satin kind of shimmery shade. I think this is fun and just different. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. This one is the Cupid one. You know, I'm grappling with these two right here because I, I don't love this size and I don't find these like super unique. 
So I don't know if I wanna keep either of these. I mean, they're fine. It's just, do I wanna keep them? I feel like I would reach for something else or travel with something else. It just, it wouldn't be either of these. And I don't feel compelled to collect this size from her, especially when most of these are, I feel like subscription exclusives a lot of times. This one is the Alloy Palette. I did get this one in 2023 or at the end of 2022 and then didn't try it until this year. You know what? I'm going to declutter this one and hold on to this one. I went into this thinking I was gonna do the other way around. I was gonna hold on to the Alloy and keep Cupid, but I'm changing my mind. I'm gonna let this go. I literally will never reach for this for a warm toned palette option if I'm traveling or even if I'm home. This is just not something I will reach for. And then these three, I would rather collect these sizes. Honestly, they're cute. They're really travel friendly. I find the curation in these is a lot better because you get a two to three ratio in most of these. Yeah, two to three ratio in most of these cases. And I think that's really fun because then you can really change the look up with the shimmers. This one is the mini star palette. This is mini retro. This is mini love. And I do not have, um, the love palette in the larger version so i do have the retro i'm gonna hold on to these three then some of her larger ones here i have the retro and the i need a nude so i need a nude launched this year neutral nice was reaching for these shimmers all the time holding on to that one the retro my least favorite palette just not my kind of color story, but the quality is really, really good. I don't find that there's enough deepening mattes in here either for like how I like to craft my looks, but the shimmers are so good and fun and different. And so I kind of feel like I use some of the palettes, even if I don't love the mattes, to grab for the shimmers. And I feel like I'm collecting these sizes. Two of my absolute favorites, the My Dream and Retro, because they're neutrally pinks, but this one has a fun spin on it. And the quality in this is so good. This is one of my favorite palettes in my collection, not just from Natasha, so I'm keeping that one. Retro, love this one as well. This one is very similar to the My Dream, except it does not teeter on some of the fun, maybe more orange, like pops of color in terms of shimmer in here. Plus there's more warm tones in here. This one is primarily like all cool tones. So I'm still holding on to that one. This one I did not love, the Xenon palette. Just not my kind of color story and I felt like some of the shimmers were just okay. Whereas most of her shimmers and everything else has been spectacular. I just found that some of these are, you know, meh a little bit and I wish this black wasn't a cream, that it was a black matte. There's a lot of things I, I wish in this palette. It's just not overall my kind of cup of tea but it's new so I'm gonna hold onto it. Then the Yucca palette, my favorite release from her in 2023, surprisingly. I thought it would be my least favorite, but the shimmers in here are so good. Honestly, I wish she would just leave the creams. They're, they're a little light and desaturated for my liking, and I would have loved to have seen this be a matte shade. I wish she would stop with the creams, but otherwise, the shimmers in here were some of my absolute favorite, and I thought it was going to be my least favorite, so it was kind of a shocker one for me. And then I have her Sunset Palette, which I'm pretty sure you can't get anymore. Hmm. I don't love this either. Some of these shimmers, like this one, very, very dry, and then some of these shades look very similar on the eyes. I like this shimmer right here. It's pretty fun. I don't know if I'm ready to get rid of this one just yet, so I'm gonna hold on to it. So from this stack, I actually did end up decluttering one. One more than I thought I would. Now let's move on into Pat. Here's my Pat McGrath collection. It's not very big, you guys. As you can see, I'm not a huge Pat McGrath collection collector. I mean, I came into the game pretty late, and I think by the time I did, there were a lot of people already saying that there were very repetitive shades. So for me, it wasn't like I fell in love with the artistry that was, I think, some of her earlier work. But I do kind of have a preference in terms of the palettes and palette quality and color stories that I really enjoy. What I have come to find is that I really enjoy these smaller palettes. I picked up three during, I think, 2023. Actually, one I feel like I picked up at the very end of 2022. And these still appear to be available for sale. This is the Sublime Smoke Six Pan Palette. I absolutely love this. I think it's kind of a mix between warm tone and cool tone, and a little delightful, smoky six pan palette. So I'm definitely holding onto that one. And then this one I actually really enjoyed. I don't enjoy this 
weird wrapped cardboard packaging, but this is the Celestial Nirvana in Nude Allure. I really enjoyed this kind of satin matte shade and all these shimmers. They were just really, really fun. I really enjoyed that one, so I'm gonna hold on to both of those. And then I have one of the large motherships, and this one is Sunlit Seduction. So this one is the newest release from her. I didn't love the mattes in here, but I really enjoyed the quad over here of shimmers. So holding on to that one. Then this one here is the Love Collection. I don't know, a smaller mothership, I guess. Iconic Infatuation. I'm not even sure when this released. I was just really unimpressed. Just very like basic shades, basic shimmers. So I am going to declutter this one. These two I really love, I think for different reasons. I wanna say both of these are still available for sale. These are both the Luxe Eye Quads. This one is Venus and Flora's Voyeuristic Fixin and Passion Fleur. This one I don't love the matte as much on me, but I love this shimmer right here. So I'm holding onto that one. And then this one, I absolutely love the matte. And then this shimmer right here is delightful. So I feel like these, even though they're on the pricier side, I find myself reaching for these ones like more than the bigger ones recently. Then I have one of the limited edition rose packaging. I hate to blind you guys. This one is Eight Divine Rose 2. I enjoy this one because I feel like it's a little bit different. I mean, it has the normal baked astral lit shade, this kind of hot pink right here. So I'm holding on to that one. And then I have the final mothership here. This one is Seven Divine Rose. This one is super basic, but I love this shade right here. Actually, I love all of this quad in the corner here. Like, I feel like most of it is worth it for me just to get this kind of formula out of Pat and the experience of the packaging. But the mattes in this one, I mean, there are only two. It, this is not my favorite in terms of matte formula. And then I have one of the holiday releases is Celestial Odyssey, 20, I think this was Christmas 2021. I haven't gotten a ton of use out of this, but I like some of the shimmers in here, no special shades or anything, but I'm still gonna hold on to this one. So I still feel good though. I did do clutter one. I will not reach for this. I can get this color story and formula from the other palettes that I have. And this is the final bundle of palettes here. This is my Tom Ford, one Chanel palette in my Viseart collection. And I do not foresee getting rid of any of these because I really enjoy all of these palettes. I have a ton of, well, I say a ton of Viseart palettes. These are the larger ones. I wanna say these are the nine pans, if I'm not mistaken. These are the only three that I have of this side. It's the Cashmere palette. This one is very cool toned, delightful. I really enjoy this sometimes. There's so many shimmers in here though. It's like really fun to play with, just the different shimmers. Then I have the La Mara, I'm assuming. Kind of a warm tone with pops of color. I enjoy the formulation on this one. I find that their mattes are really, really pigmented, blendable, last a long time. The shimmers are very light, but some of them are fun duochromes. So I thoroughly enjoy the Viseart quality, except their Lotus collection, which we'll get into. The Soleil La Plage. I wonder if this is La Playa or if that's like a hard G. I have no idea. I cannot, I'm not good with French. This one is beautiful and just fun in the summer. I mean, it was dropped in the summer. I think it's supposed to be a summer palette. Again, really good formulation here. And then this is the only one that I have of this size. This is the Spritz Edit. Really enjoy this one. It's gotta be one of my favorite ones from them. Warm toned, also neutral. Love it, great quality. And then I have some of these sized ones. Uh, some of these aren't my favorite color stories, but I'm not gonna get rid of any. This is the Petite Pro 2, I think is what it is. I enjoy this color story too. I, I enjoy this quality very much. I like to keep the plastic on there. I feel like it's gonna keep them lasting longer. Petite Pro 3. And this one's a little bit of a cool tone, grungier green, not my absolute favorite, but still holding on to it because I think it performs well. Then I have the London Etoile. This one, again, a little bit deeper. Do I need this plastic on the mirror? No, I do not. <laughs> a little bit deeper, but still a really good color story, really good quality in here. This one may be my least favorite of these sizes. I don't know why I kept the boxes on these two and not the other ones. San Francisco Etoile. 
Again, probably one of my least favorite color stories. I don't know, I actually was using this shade a lot as kind of like a smoked out liner, and I thought it was really pretty. I just don't find myself reaching for this one quite as much as some of the other ones. Now I have a bunch of these petite foies. I really like the petite foies, especially for traveling. These three right here are part of the Lotus collection that launched in 2023, and the rest of them launched, I wanna say before then, or even some of these like at the very beginning, Violetta and Lila Do, I think launched maybe at the end of last year. I'm not entirely sure. And then these two I've had. So let's go over these two that are a little bit older. This is Garnet. I think this probably launched in 2022. This one is beautiful, but it has an unusable matte shade for me. It's still gorgeous. It's like an all shimmer palette or to pair with others. Holding on to it. Petite Foie Amelie. This one is warm toned, nice, even ratio, performs really well. And the last of the good quality that I purchased from Viseart was these Petite Foie. So this is the Lila Do, and it's a cool toned purple, sort of. It's not really mauve. It's more leaning on the cool toned purple side. The quality in this is really good. Again, I don't always reach for cool tones, but I love it. This one I prefer more, the Violetta. I just think that it's so much more depth can be had in this palette, plus this duochrome is just amazing. Now let's talk about these ones, which I'm actually not sure if I'm gonna hold on to. The ones from the Water Lotus collection seems like a very different formula to me. And clearly you can see I've dipped my toes into Viseart enough that I thought I was familiar with their formula, but this was very different. These were very powdery. They didn't have a lot of pigment. They didn't last very long on my eyes and the shimmers felt a lot drier than some of the other ones. So this one is the Water Lotus. I honestly don't understand why I got that. In fact, I'm gonna put all three of these into the chopping block because I do not know if I'm gonna end up holding on to them. And so far I only have six into the chopping block, so I feel good about it. But I wanna give these one final shot before I decide whether they stay or go. This one should be Sakura Lotus. I hate to get rid of Viseart because these little quads are like 25, $29. And this is the Rosea Lotus. Better, more neutral color story, but again, these shades blend away to nothing and they do not last on my eyes, not even set with a base. So chopping block those, but holding on to the rest of them. Now I have one Chanel quad, it's the Le Four Ombres. I think it's 274 is the color story. I think this is an all shimmer palette, yes, or satin and or shimmer. So three shimmers on a satin shade. Honestly, I really enjoy this. I think the shimmer formula is pretty darn good. I think the satin is fun. So even though this is ridiculously expensive and I probably wouldn't go out of my way to build a Chanel collection, I still really liked the quality in this. So I am for sure holding onto this. I only have three Tom Ford palettes. I'm again, not a huge collector of Tom Ford, but I've dipped my toes in at least enough to kind of get an idea if I like the formula. Most of these are no longer for sale. This is a Leopard Sun. I think this one is my favorite color story, probably my favorite shimmer. All of Tom Ford's palettes are luxury, desaturated shades, but this, I felt like built more depth. The shimmer was more punchy. So I'm holding onto that one. I think I purchased this one in 2023. Yes, I did. I got it in February. And then this one, beautiful shimmer here. It's a duochrome. I like keeping the plastic sometimes if I can, just so these don't dry out. Beautiful duochrome shade. Again, I don't think they make this. This is in Pretty Baby. These are all satin shades. So if you're looking for something very, very light, I feel like this is nice, but it's also a, a duochrome shimmer. So I don't know how often Tom Ford does those kind of like duochromes or multi-dimensional colored shimmers. So I thought that was cool. And the final one is Honeymoon. Hmm, can you get Honeymoon? Honeymoon you might be able to still get. Leopard Sun I feel like you can still get somewhere, but not everywhere. But Pretty Baby, I'm pretty sure they don't sell anymore. I can't remember. These are like baked, the baked formula. And I think that these are all very nice. They're again, very desaturated. They are satin baked shades. Holding onto these, honestly, they're not bad. I'm just, again, not going out of my way to build my Tom Ford collection. So out of this one, I didn't end up decluttering any, but I am putting three into the chopping block, you guys. Like I said, that makes 
nine palettes that I put into the chopping block. So let me do the final count for you guys so we can see how many we kept versus how many we decluttered. Okay, I just did the final total. I started with 260 palettes. I thought it was gonna end up being a lot more, probably because I bought or added 105 palettes to my collection in 2023. So a huge chunk of that came from this year. So started with 260, have decluttered 47 palettes. Nine are in the chopping block, so we don't know. So we're just gonna call the declutter pile 47. I have kept 213, still a ton, but I made space in like one and a half drawers. And a bunch of those hadn't even been put away into my palette drawer collection. So I feel pretty good about it, you guys. If you guys are interested in other declutters. I have other declutters up that I have done for this year. I've got my blushes, bronzers, highlighters, face palettes, concealers, powders. So if you're interested in seeing those, you can check out my channel and my declutter playlist. I still have left like single shadows, liquids, creams, all of that to go through. I'm not quite ready to do it, but I am going to do it probably at the very beginning of January because I do need to go through it. There's probably a lot in there that I just don't like. I added a ton to my collection also in 2023 and there are some in there that I'm just not loving the formula. So any Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm out of here and I hope to catch you all in the next one. Bye guys.